Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that provide context for today's public affairs issues. He saw occasional cars go by on the rough roads, but these strange mechanical contraptions seemed out of place in the country. They were for city people, not for him. He kept on grooming his old reliable horse and waited. And suddenly one day, it appeared. It was called the Model T. It had a four-cylinder, 20-horsepower engine and a planetary gear that defied the laws of science. Maybe it didn't look classy, but it could take a beating on rough country roads and still get you there. It was a farmer's car, built by a farmer. There was only one thing wrong with it. It cost $850. Millions of citizens looked at the Model T and licked their chops. There it was, the car of their dreams. But they couldn't afford it. Back in Detroit, Henry Ford wondered how he could bring the price of the Model T down to where everybody could buy it. He figured that the more cars he made and sold, the cheaper he could sell each one. And he went to work on this idea. In those days, each car was built from the frame up on stationary wooden horses. There was a different crew for each car, and the same crew stayed on the car until it was finished. That meant duplication of effort and a lot of time wasted. They tried moving the men from car to car. Each man had a special job to do, and as soon as he finished it, he moved on to the next car and did the same thing there. That was better, but it still took 12 and a half hours to assemble each Model T. Henry Ford watched it for a while, and he had an inspiration. Instead of moving the men past the cars, why not move the cars past the men? So on one hot August morning, they tried it that way. A husky young fellow put a rope over his shoulder, and Henry Ford called, let's go. And at that very moment, as the workmen began to fasten the parts onto the slowly moving car, the assembly line was born, a technique that was to revolutionize mass production all over the world. Once they found that the idea would work, they began to improve it, refine it. They rolled a chassis down a single line of track, pushing it from crew to crew. And the more expert they became at this new method, the faster the cars came off the assembly line, and the price of the Model T began to drop. They tried the same idea on all the various parts of the car, and created what were called sub-assemblies. Each man on the line became a specialist. He did one thing, and he did it perfectly, and passed the work along to the next man. Minute by minute, production was winning the battle against wasted time and wasted effort. Parts were fed to the workmen by gravity slides so they wouldn't have to stop and wait for new parts. Then they put the parts on moving conveyor belts. And this was a great step forward because now they could regulate the flow of work and keep it moving at a constant rate of speed. The cars began coming off the assembly line at the rate of one every 40 seconds. And what Henry Ford had foreseen happened. Mass production and the assembly line drove the price of the Model T down from 850 to 300 dollars. Now everybody could have one. Yeah.